Coke or Pepsi? Chocolate or vanilla? 762 or 545? Now, what do all of these things have in common? Well, they're things that the internet has been debating on which is better for a very long time, about as long as there's been an internet. There are also things that if you have strong opinions one way or the other, there's probably nothing I can say to change your mind. So that's not what we're here to do today. Today we're just going to be talking about some of the differences between the two biggest calibers that the AK is known for and uh, do a little bit of ballistic testing and overall, I don't know, try to fill 12 minutes. So first off, let's talk about what kind of ammo we're going to be using today. In the 7.62 corner, we have the Bernal Factory Reman uh, FMJ BT 124 grain uh, and we have the Bellum ammo, uh, I think it's 123 grain uh, brass case. There's not going to be a really a huge difference between stuff like this and just the generic Tula that you might have found at Walmart before um, the ammo problem. For 545, we're going to be using Tula steel case, 60 grain, 545 ammo, and some good old surplus 7N6 steel core. This is that fucking good good. I love this stuff. Now, first off, for the majority of these tests, we're going to be using. This for 762, this is an SLR uh, Arsenal 107 FR uh, that I have Zenit fucked a little bit. <laughs> kind of making it out to look like a 103 clone, it's a fairly recent thing. And for 545, we have one of the AKG Tantals. This is the Polish variant of the AK-74. We're going to do a basic comparison of both calibers and then we're going to get to some ballistic gel testing because today we're fancy like that. First off with 762. 762 is a slower, fatter round, but you are carrying a little bit more energy because of the weight. It does have a little bit more recoil than 545, which you can't see as well on this one because I do have a lot of weight on this gun in Zenitco parts, uh, which is kind of cheating, but without it, you'd see a little bit more of a dramatic muzzle rise. The weight does help cut down on the overall recoil, you know, at the cost of being fucking heavier. Now what you will see on 7.62 is a little bit more muzzle rise. It's more recoil, a little slower target reacquisition than 5.45. While also not being useless at longer ranges, it does have worse ballistics long range than 5.45. This is all in the trade-off that you're delivering more energy on target per round. Let's move to 5.45. Now, at about half the weight of 7.62, you're noticing significantly less recoil on 5.45, but not entirely at the cost of energy. You see, as it is about half the weight per round of the actual projectile, it's moving considerably faster at uh, almost about 3,000 feet per second. The ammo is lighter, the recoil is lower, the target reacquisition is faster, it also has better long-range ballistics, much more on par with the American 5.56. Now, of course, the caliber is a little bit more esoteric. It's not quite as common. It delivers less overall energy and uh, struggles with things like brush deflection and whatnot, but overall, still a very, very competent caliber, and I like it quite a lot. Alrighty. Yes, this is an AK-12 magazine in an old Polish tantal. That's, that's how we do here. Let's go do some ballistic testing. But before we do that, time to thank our sponsor. Do you like watching sports ball? Nah, fuck that. More importantly, do you like making easy money? Well, if that's the case, you should head on over to mybookie.ag and bet on the lock of the season. Basically, it's a promotion they're running right now where if any team scores in the upcoming Cowboys versus Bucks game, you win. Yeah, literally, you're just betting if a team is going to score in a goddamn football game. Which I'm pretty sure they said that a football game hasn't ended without either team scoring since, like, World War II. Super easy. Hell, I'm going to be doing it myself just to see what this is all about. But it even gets better than that. If you head over to MyBookie and use the promo code BRANDON, they will double your first deposit. Put it on our bucks. Now it's 200 bucks. They'll double your funds, which means you'll double the winnings. So go ahead and check out my bookie. Remember to use the code Brandon, and uh, I'm gonna leave the links down in the description and in the pinned comment as always. Just make sure when this works out for you, you buy me a beer later, all right? Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Alrighty, so here we are playing around with some ballistic gel. 
courtesy of Ballistic Dummy Labs. Now you may wonder why the surface of this ballistic gel looks a little bit like a wrinkled nut sack. Uh, the reason being is that uh, during shipping, especially to a place like Texas, uh, it gets a little hot and it kind of takes the shape of its plastic container a little bit, leaves an impression. Apparently you can get rid of that with a heat gun, hair dryer, maybe putting it in the oven a little bit, because uh, this stuff does kind of melt and recongeal. But A, I just didn't fucking do that, and B, I wouldn't have gotten to say wrinkled nut sack. So we're gonna be using the Bernal first and then the Bellum second. Uh, gonna be going both rounds on this gel block. Getting jiggy with it in three, two, one. I just reset it for the Bellum. Try to go a little lower on it this time. Well, I succeeded on going lower on it. Um, in fact, a little bit too low, hit right there at the base. And um, long story short, I owe Matt a new table. Let's try that again. There we go, that's a little bit more of what I was hoping for. Uh, nice little entrance here, exit right over here. So the top one is the FMJBT. And the bottom is the uh, Bellum. So you can see uh, the FMJBT had a much more dramatic looking uh, wound channel, whereas the Bellum was more straight in, straight out. But what you're seeing there in the middle is what we call temporary cavity. And uh, it's what a lot of people don't understand about ballistics, maybe if you're kind of new to the premise, is that uh, it's not just a, a hole poker. There's so much energy transferred uh, from the velocity of that much mass uh, that it actually opens up. If you ever watch those super slow-mos on ballistic gel, uh, there's what is called the temporary cavity, which is the permanent cavity is just the hole that is cut by the bullet itself, but the rest is just the energy being transferred to the you know, flesh uh, around it that does a lot of the ripping and tearing, and that is where a lot of the damage comes from. I don't know why that feels vaguely inappropriate. All right, let's move on, five, four, five. Got the Tula up first and then the seven and six underneath. Let's see how she performs. Tula in three, two, one. <laughs> Now for seven and six. Three, two, one. So the Tula had a pretty straight uh, path of entry here, and then about six to eight inches in, just started tumbling and doing all sorts of crazy shit, and then left. Uh, the seven and six went a little higher with, uh, pretty close though. And that got a couple inches in and then immediately started doing all this whack shit. You see all the black shit it left behind. Uh, that makes sense for seven and six because seven and six is just a nasty round for, yep, for performance, like what it will do to you, but also the fact that it is corrosive as hell and is probably made of, I don't even want to speculate. Yep, sorry, this block is not quite as clear as the other one, but hopefully you still be able to get a good visualization. So now that we've tried it both with 16 inch barrels, let's try something a little bit shorter. So now we're gonna try to reuse those same gel blocks and find out what the difference is between 16 inch barrels and something a little bit shorter. Now I could have gone uh, with my M92 PAP, which has a 10 inch barrel for a 7.62, but then I wouldn't be able to bring out Olga the trash pistol again. So this time without uh, a shovel folder, uh, but got some BT loaded up in this, and we're gonna give it another shot on the gel. And Yahtzee. All right, so what's interesting is that it seems to have left uh, a much cleaner trail. Uh, it doesn't have all that black shit all in it. Uh, this has uh, faster expansion, it looks like, right up front. And again, still had enough energy, clearly, to travel all the way through the block and out the other side and keep trucking. That is why we use berms, ladies and gentlemen. So next up, we have the AKS-74U, or the Krinkov, or the Krink, or the Stinky Krinky. This bad boy has an eight and a quarter inch barrel, so hopefully, and with our 
seven and six round in here, we'll be able to see this thing do some dirty, dirty work. Proving to you insecure guys out there that it is not the size of the wave, but the motion in the ocean. In three, two, one. Now, I got something very, very special to share with you guys today, and I'm really glad that this happened. What makes the 7N6 so damn cool is because it has a bit of a hollow pocket in the nose before the steel tip. It means it's pretty good at armor penetration, but it's also really good at hitting a solid object and then tumbling, which is exactly what it did here. Um, as you can see, it kind of ripped through. It's the bottom one there. Tumble, tumble, tumble. And it actually yawed and changed trajectory after about halfway through the block to the point where it fell out the bottom and lodged itself into the table in a way that I don't know if I can get it out. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> but that is, that is your 7N6 bullet right there. Um, I think that bullet just lives there now. That's something that I, I don't think a lot of people think enough about is the fact that just because your bullet has a lot of energy doesn't mean it's going to impart that energy on your target. So even if you have a bullet that has, you know, three times the amount of energy as the other, uh, if it only imparts a third of that energy, you know, it, it's, it's putting two thirds of that raw force into the tree behind your target. Whereas this, the 7N6, especially out of that short barrel, just dumped everything it had into this target here. Uh, and then lodged itself. All right, <laughs> that stuff's screwing around with the crank. Time to test something a little bit, uh, a little bit longer. All right, so we've done standard 16 inch barrels and we've done shorter SBR or pistol barrels. Now let's move on to the long boys. This right here is an AKG RPK. Kind of neat, just a light, a light machine gun configuration of the AK. I think they're pretty cool. And of course we've got a Russian aluminum waffle mag in there. Uh, because let's face it, at this point, this entire video is just kind of a flex post. But again, got some Bernal in there. Let's uh, see how the gel handles it. Right, I'm gonna try to put this one a little more on top in three, two, one. That definitely seemed to carry a little bit more energy. I'm back here, shithead. Okay. That kind of fucked up our clean side a little bit. So we kind of landed on our clear side, so now it's foggy as all hell. But as you can see, uh, this is now very thoroughly taken care of. I don't think that this guy is gonna be a problem anymore. And uh, frankly, on that last one, you could see it actually diverted, I think. That's crazy. That's helped by the, uh, the energy transfer, considering it was able to fucking pick this thing up and eat it off a table, uh, tells you all you need to know about the extra energy. And the 545 counterpart to the RPK, the RPK-74. This is my Russian RPK-74. Did a video on this one the other day, but now we're gonna shoot some 7N6 through it and see how this longer barrel affects that target. Showing you what that long barrel do in three, two, one. Did you see that smoke? How much smoke came out of the end of that target? The fuck? All right, so that one seems to have entered right about here, right about midway through. And uh, it's actually left a sizable, sizable hole there at the end. Uh, let's me know that it probably exited pretty damn close to fully sideways. Uh, I think it, the, the temporary cavity on this one uh, is what caused that smoke to be coming out of the end of the target. Because basically, because of the amount of compression, like the expansion and then recompression, uh, the air trapped inside of it, we basically turned this ballistic gel into a, uh, you know, a makeshift combustion engine, if you know anything about that. Um, physics are cool. That was actually so fun that I feel like doing it 29 more times. <laughs> 
762 by 39 almost synonymous with the AK itself. It was the first caliber that it was ever chambered in and has continued to work great in that gun to modern day. It's definitely more common in the United States. It's usually cheaper in the US here. Uh, the weapon that fires it is definitely more common and more affordable here in the States by and large. And it delivers a hell of a punch, a whole lot of energy for round fired. This is brilliant. But I like this. 545, not without its drawbacks. It does deliver less energy. It's way more kind of esoteric, both the caliber itself, the ammo, and the weapons that fire it. Uh, usually less affordable, and now with imports in question, may have a hard time finding it, but I'll be damned if I just don't love this caliber to death. Better ballistics, better long range trajectory, lower recoil, faster target reacquisition, and just really buttery smooth to shoot and the guns that shoot it are just sexy. So yes, my heart does belong to the 545, but it's kind of like being a ass man or a tits man. It uh, doesn't really matter. You can still love both just fine. That's why I own plenty of guns in both and I intend to own a lot more before I die. Anyhow, that's pretty much all we've got to talk about with 7.62 and 545 today. There's a lot I didn't even get into that I maybe wanted to. If you guys want to see a part two to this video, please let me know down in the comments. And if there's other calibers that you would like me to compare or other just comparison videos in general, please let me know down in the comments. I'm genuinely interested to see if you guys care about this sort of content because I really don't mind making it. Maybe next time I'll have a little bit better ballistic gel. I'll clear that up ahead of time. But other than that, this kind of, uh, you know, head-to-head -head comparison stuff and uh, getting to maybe teach some of you guys who don't know as much about shooting, uh, kind of why people care uh, about one over the other. I think it's kind of cool. That's all we got for you guys today. If you want to head over to Bunker Brain and get yourself some less sweaty AK Guy merch, sorry we don't sell the used ones, that's pretty fucking weird, but <laughs> we can have the links down in the description and in the pinned comment for that. And uh, yeah, no, I appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video, and as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Here is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put his rise to the top. But I can't let you can stop, 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 can stop. Coke or Pepsi? Chocolate or vanilla? 762 or 545? Now, what did he think? What did he think? I don't speak that good. An ant biting the shit out of my foot that entire take. Ow.